This is the GeForce GTX 1660 Ti. You've probably heard of it from uh, you know any YouTuber ever, um, or any budget build ever, and it's, well, according to the benchmarks that any other mainstream YouTuber has given you, it's pretty decent. But I'm not here to test if it's some great gaming performer that's like, you know, oh, super good, it works with a 9900K because that's what they test with. I'm here to bring you guys uh, a review, I guess I'm going to call it, of this graphics card from an entirely different perspective in two ways. The first way is that unlike a lot of people who reviewed this graphics card, I actually had to pay for this graphics card. Yes, I had to pay the $279.99 retail price for a GTX 1660 Ti. So that's where I'm coming from. Yes, uh, any YouTuber can analyze the price and be like, well, is it worth it compared to these other? But I've actually had to pay that price for this card. So that's the kind of perspective I can get, part one. Part two, the perspective of someone who live streams. I use a dual PC streaming setup. That is the gold standard for a high quality live stream that has no effect on your gaming performance. I want to see if we can get a similar result using the Turing encoder, which is the uh, basically streamer or whatever you want to call it, uh, that is in the 1660 Ti. The 1660, I believe, is the lowest end card that has the new Turing encoder. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But the 1660 Ti, uh, you know, has it. Should I? I want to use it. I want to see what the quality is. So I'm going to pop it in Threadripper. Now you're probably wondering, well, why would you throw this in a Threadripper PC? Well, here's another thing. Most of the time when people test this card, they tested it with a 9900K, a 3950X or 3900X, I believe it was out at the time. Well, how does that make any sense? You know, wh who's pairing a 1660 Ti with a 9900K? What? Oh, I spent, I have so much money, I bought a 9900K, but I better save on the graphics card. That makes no sense. No one is pairing a 1660 Ti. I wouldn't pair it with my 3900X, so why should you? I'm putting it with Threadripper now that sounds kind of almost the opposite of what I'm saying here, but Threadripper's clock is pretty dynamic, and its core clock is similar to that of, let's say, a 26 or 2700X. It's around 3.8 to 4.3 gigahertz, and it can be limited. In some of the tests, I actually did limit it to 3.8 gigahertz to see, with a CPU bottleneck, how well the, the quality of the encoder actually works. That's where I'm coming from in this video. I want to see in a system that would typically have, like, a, you know, spec wise, would maybe have a 1660 Ti or at least a 1660 with that new Turing encoder. Would it be worth it to have this for a live streamer or someone who wants to record? Um, so, I will be testing three games in this video uh, CSGO, PUBG, and GTA 5 to see, you know, even in some games where the uh, CPU is limited to 3.8 gigahertz, totally not by accident because of the motherboard's terrible overclocking software or whatever, that's not the point. Um, uh, can you still get a high quality stream? Because that's the goal when streaming. There's two main points. Point one, the main goal is getting content that looks good to your audience. Number two is, you know, having no effect on your game when live streaming. You want to have as little effect of your game on your game uh, by live streaming. So you don't want to lose FPS while streaming. So I'm going to pop this in the Threadripper. We're going to test some games and see how it performs. Now, all the clips you're about to see were recorded with the 1660 Ti. They were played on the Threadripper 2920X, 32 gigs of RAM, and a 1660 Ti, and they were encoded with the NVENC encoder using OBS. Now, uh, some games might have experienced some FPS drops from OBS itself. It doesn't play nice with some games, especially like CSGO, but the GPU is what's being tested here, so you guys want to look at the quality and the FPS in the games, but let's hop over to the games and, uh, and see what's up. All right, so our first game is PUBG. The reason I picked uh, PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds is because it's a great GPU stressor. It stresses the GPU with its, you know, it's got all these plants and, and stuff. Uh, we're basically playing on a, a mix of uh, medium, well, I think it's mostly medium settings, and uh, the FPS was actually really good. Even with the CPU limited to 3.8 gigahertz, uh, we were seeing uh, over 100 FPS in almost all parts of the map. Uh, it doesn't help that the, this specific uh, part of this map is garbage and should not be in this new arcade mode, but that's the point. Uh, the FPS was 
uh, really good. And as you can see, the quality of the actual recording is, well, also really good. Uh, just take a look at this gameplay. I'll play about a minute of gameplay here, just so you can really see, even with all the movement and looking around, that it actually remains a... a it, maintains a really good quality of both uh, gameplay performance as well as uh, encoding and video quality. So uh, let's just roll this gameplay here for you guys. Our second game is Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Now, Counter-Strike is not a GPU-intensive game uh, in the slightest, I would say. Um, it's actually a CPU, often bottlenecked game. And that's where this test actually shows where the 1660 Ti might be a useful streaming graphics card. So, uh, limited to 3.8 gigahertz on uh, Inferno, which is one of the harder maps to run in the game. That's why I like using it for test. Inferno and Nuke are two of the greatest maps to actually test if you can play all the other maps in the game. But basically, on Inferno, uh, we, you could see we're definitely limited by our CPU. Yes, it. I know it says 12% usage, but don't forget it's a 24-thread CPU. So 12%, you know, whatever. That's its point. And uh, the graphics card was not, you know, getting about 50 to 60% usage, so it definitely wasn't the bottleneck here. And also, if you might notice throughout the clips, is that there's sometimes a stutter in the game. Uh, as you can see here, uh, there's like a quick stutter or uh, where the game kind of freezes for a sec. That is what I was talking about with OBS uh, kind of conflicting with CSGO. CSGO and OBS, and most recording software for that matter, like even GeForce Experience sometimes, I recommend GeForce Experience when uh, recording, or I don't really recommend it for live streaming, but when recording Counter-Strike, I definitely recommend using GeForce Experience, with work, which works just as fine on the 1660 Ti, uh, because OBS, for some reason, and CSGO just have issues. That's why a lot of CSGO streamers actually do dual PC streaming, is to avoid that. But, but that's the point. Let's just see uh, about a minute or two of gameplay, uh, where I try to make myself look good, despite the fact I am very bad after years of not playing. Alright, so our final game is Grand Theft Auto 5. Uh, Grand Theft Auto 5 will... I'll actually put more gameplay at the end of this uh, for a specific reason. GTA 5 is a great test of both the CPU and the GPU. Uh, so we'll be playing on high settings to make sure that we actually get decent performance. So my goal is above 100 FPS. Uh, some people aim for 60. I think that's BS who's playing a game on a computer at 60 FPS these days. Or at least who's shooting for 60 FPS on a computer just buy an Xbox. Um, so 100 FPS is what I'm shooting for, so that's what we're playing on high settings, and, uh, we recorded a bunch of gameplay, and I just, I was having way too, I just started having too much fun. 
I was just having a lot of fun playing the game. It was a smooth experience. Even like look, comparing it to my 3900X 1080 Ti build, it was it just it was the same smoothness that I I just love. Even on a 180 hertz monitor, it was just really smooth. So I love the gameplay of that game. And so I got a little carried away. But uh, as you can see, the quality is just great. But I'll let you see for yourself uh, what you think. And here's a little bit longer of gameplay. You could skip past it if you want. But I don't know. I was having a lot of fun, and I don't know. I just I love the game. I like being just a really Really, really bad person. Alright guys, so uh, I'm going to talk about this gameplay in the background um, and finish lots of video and say that if you ha are on a budget and have, let's say, a, a weaker CPU that you don't really want to uh, spend any performance streaming with or gaming with and you want to just get a graphics card that'll work and not take away too many FPS, because I did test both ga the games without and with a uh, recording and the FPS drop, if any, was minimal and I can basically say that's due to OBS and not, being, not playing friendly, especially with CSGO. Um, I recommend this graphics card, the 1660 Ti, especially since you can find them used in some places even new for like 200 bucks. Uh, and for a card with this kind of uh, recording quality, it's just amazing. I think I can definitely say I'll recommend the 1660 Ti. I usually don't recommend the 1660 Ti for most builds, um, but this is a special case if you want to uh, be a content creator and you're on a budget. The 1660 Ti mixes you know great gaming performance with really good encoding uh, for video. So I do recommend the 1660 Ti. Uh, now this specific 1660 Ti, I wouldn't recommend because it's the blower style cooler. It's what I it was available. It was like the cheapest price one I could like relatively find. I think I got it for like 250, not 279.99, like I said. But that's basically the normal price. But that's that's point. It's just I wouldn't recommend the blower style because it usually runs hotter. But 
that's really it. I recommend this graphics card. Uh, I hope you guys kind of enjoyed this video. I do like looking at cards from different perspectives, especially with the streaming in mind. So that's why I always say, if you have a Radeon card, if you're looking between Radeon and a video, you have to look. Are you just looking for uh, gaming? In which case, at the lower end, Radeon is the king. Or if you're looking to game and stream and videos, encoder is always higher quality. That's this point. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys liked the video. Um, I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.